Hey, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to talk about Fallout 76, and more specifically, I want to talk about how there will be no griefers inside Fallout 76, or very limited griefers and practically non-existent. Now, for those of you who don't know what a griefer is, Essentially, a griefer is kind of like a troll, and they will troll you in a open-world MMO game or a multiplayer game. They'll kill you repeatedly, and they'll just try to make your game as difficult as possible by murdering you and trolling you and stuff like that. There are also some griefers who will pretend to be your friend at first in these multiplayer games and then kill you to get what they want. So guys, let's talk about how there will not be griefers in Fallout 76, and the reason why there will be no griefers in Fallout 76. So the reason why there's going to be no griefers or very limited griefers in Fallout 76 is because Bethesda Game Studios, over the last couple of days since the E3 uh, press conference where they showed off the gameplay for Fallout 76, have come out and said that there will be multiple mechanics in order to prevent griefing. And also, in a documentary on Fallout 76 by Noclip, they talk about the features in there as well. Now, in this video, I will be showing you guys a lot of that information from interviews with Todd Howard and Pete Hines, and clips from the documentary by Noclip about Fallout 76, where they talk about mechanics they have implemented so people cannot grief you. So guys, the first major one is probably by Pete Hines, and Pete Hines goes on and he talk he goes in this interview and he said and he talks about you know PVP and how it will be, and he says essentially yes people can kill you, however you will respawn nearby, uh, you won't be able to be your your body's not going to be able to be looted, and your stuff's not going to be able to ta be taken from you by someone who kills you. You know you can either respawn nearby or you could try to go after that person and kill the person who just killed you or you could just walk the other way and he kind of compares it to when you see a death claw in fallout 4 you could either go try to kill it and it might kill you or you could keep on going until you kill the death claw or if you don't want to mess with the death claw you could just move around now keep in mind uh that the fallout 76 map is four times the size of fallout 4 so walking the other way and kind of just leaving where you're at so you don't have to encounter that person anymore will be fair will be relatively easy to do and that was shown in this part of the interview with Pete Hines right here like people can't grief you they can't keep coming after you with and, and killing you over and over every time you respawn like the game literally doesn't let you do that think of pvp more like a challenge like i'm going through the world and i decide that i'm playing as kind of like I'm going to mess with people and be sort of a raider and like not have a base and just move around and so forth. If I see Marcus moving across, I can be like, hey, you want to go? And you can be like, no, I'm good. And like, well, maybe there's a, maybe there's a conflict there, but I can't keep, just keep coming back after you. Like right. if there is a conflict and you die and you're like, yeah, I'm good, like then that's kind of the end of it. So you don't lose your progression. You don't get looted. You don't lose any of that stuff. We... We don't want it to be hardcore in terms of you lose progression when you die. It, it's supposed to be, you know, Todd used the word softcore. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a role-playing game. You have a character. You have stats and abilities. You're leveling up. You're getting better at stuff. Not just it's it's a free-for-all because that that's just not what it's supposed to be a role-playing game in a role-playing world. And it's post-apocalyptic. So it's supposed to be about what would the other people be like in this world? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to be a nomadic trader that trades with us. Well, then you should. Hey, I want to be a part of the Minutemen. Well, then you should start the Minutemen. Like, you be in the Minutemen that's, and run around and help people. And, like, I need help defending my settlement. Okay, I'll do it, but I want some money for that. Like, however you want to play it, like, that's that's what role-playing can be. Yeah, it can yeah. be lots of other things. It can be very scripted and dialogue trees and so forth. But it can also be, like, D&D. &D. It can be, like, uh, there's a very limited, uh, there's very few rules, and you decide how you want to interact and what you it, want to It's be. actually funny you said D&D &D because I... I uh, you know, when I was watching and listening to Todd, I, I kind of said to myself, like, oh, man, this is like a role player's dream, yes. actually. Like, I could definitely see a lot of people playing the game in that way, which is Sure, awesome. but, like, if you want to do the kind of stuff that you're probably used to in Fallout games, which is, look, I just want to do quests, and I want to find cool areas to explore. explore. Now, like, yeah. yes, you should do all of that. Like, of course there's all of that in the game. There is a ridiculous number of quests. The map is four times the size. Like, it's absolutely massive. But you can do that and then decide at any given moment, yeah, I do want to join up with somebody, or somebody invited me to group up to, 
finish this quest or to do this thing, and I want to. Like, it, it's an option. It's a thing that you can choose to do however you want to play. And we're trying to do it in a way that keeps people from too much of the negative, which is like, people keep screwing with me or screwing with my game. Like, yeah, we have a way to sort of stop them from doing that to, to the extent where it bothers you. Like, there still needs to be some tension, right? I see a person, like, are they helpful? Are they friendly? Are they not friendly? I mean, that's actually excitement but of that it. Like, not different knowing. Yeah. Than, like, I see a death claw. Like, right. I'm not getting <laughs> griefed by a death claw when I keep trying to kill it and it kills me five times in a row. Like, that's just the game. The game. But, but we want you in the same way to opt into that. No, I'm going to kill that thing. I'm going to get that guy or that lady that got me. You can opt into that or you can be like, just like you would with a death claw that's in that spot, be like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to go this way and they can't mess with you and you can just keep playing. And I think that's pretty cool that they've thought that far ahead. However, that's not the only mechanics they have talk, talked about implementing so people can't grief. Another uh, mechanic they talked about uh, implementing so people can't grief is in the form of where you could place your camp. Now, your camp is essentially your base beacon where you place it and you kind of uh, can build around it. And you can only place your base beacon in certain areas. They say there are restrictions to where you could place it, like outside the vault, so people can't grief. But they really never said any other major restrictions. But I'm pretty sure there's going to be restrictions on where you could place it. Like you probably won't be able to place it in a major town or city. You probably won't be able to place it in the middle of a road or somewhere major or something like that. It seems like they thought, you know, looked at other online games where people will build their bases in very inconvenient location locations and try to ruin everything for everyone else. And it seems like they thought about this and they talked about it in the no clip documentary in this part right here. Then like I said, you have your camp, which are mini workshops you can place almost anywhere. There's certain restrictions on that because we don't want you like the griefing outside the exit of the vault, but you can place them all over. They go, when you move servers, if that space is available, your camp will just be there. For some reason, again, this is a big game with a low number of people. It's overlapping and we can't place it there. It will be packed up and blueprinted. You can place it somewhere else, boom. So I think that's really cool that they're going to stop people from placing their bases in certain place to stop people from griefing. Like they say, we're not gonna allow people to, you know, have their base right outside the vault. So they really can't grief, which is awesome. Another cool mechanic they talked about implementing is bounties. So if someone is an aggressive player and they're constantly killing people, they'll get a bounty placed on their head and essentially if somebody kills them, they'll get a reward for it. And I think this is an amazing deterrent to put in the game to stop people from griefing and killing each other. If you look at a game like uh, Grand Theft Auto V, when a bounty goes out on your head, everybody and their grandmother is trying to kill you in that game. And I'm pretty sure it'll be no different in Fallout uh, 76. And I'm pretty sure that will make griefers or people who want to grief think twice about actually killing people because think about it if you're a griefer and you're like okay i'm gonna kill this guy for fun and you know i just want to kill this person just to kill this person you know that kind of thing um you know the griefer first off can't get anything out of it he can't loot your body as soon as you die you could either choose to challenge him again or you could choose to go spawn off somewhere else and just kind of walk away and you know never encounter him again hopefully so if this gr griefer is an aggressive player and he's constantly killing people, he'll get, he'll get a bounty placed on his head. And like I said, if you play Grand Theft Auto V, you know that when you get a bounty placed on your head, everybody in their grandmother's trying to kill you, and people will kill you no matter what. No matter how hard you fight to survive, people will eventually kill you because they will keep on coming and coming and coming until they claim that bounty that's placed on your head. And I think that's a really smart way to kind of punish people who are too aggressive. And they talk about that in this part of the interview right here. There are a lot of systems working in Fallout 76, and BGS's hope is that by introducing all these ways to play, they have a game world that is capable of creating emergent moments. They have to do some work to make sure it's not total chaos, for instance, giving wanted levels to aggressive players, and having it so that the death penalty is as light as making you respawn at a nearby location. And I think that's going to be a really good deterrent, placing bounties on people's head because if they're an aggressive player, other people are going to kill them for sure. Or at least try and come kill them, and it'll make their time in the game just a little more difficult. Another thing they're doing to kind of counteract griefers is that there's only going to be about 24 to 32 people per server. On a map, four times as big as the Fallout 4 map. So that's pretty insane. I mean, you'll probably rarely run into anybody anyway. 
on a map that has, let's say it has 32 people. They said it will be about 24 to 32 people on a server. So let's say you have the max number, 32 people on your server. And you're playing on a map four times as big as Fallout 4. It's almost going to be impossible for you to run into anybody. It, keep in mind, it might happen. It might happen often. But it's not going to happen like crazy like we see in other online survival games where you literally run 10 feet and somebody's there or you run 10 feet in that direction and somebody's there or you run into the nearest town and somebody's there they said that they've put a lot of work into this map there's a lot of locations to explore a lot of loot to be earned a lot of loot to be found a lot of secrets as well so i think most people will be out exploring rather than trying to kill each other and if there's only 32 people on the on a map this four times as big as fallout 4 it's really going to be hard to grief because it's going to be hard to find people because they're going to be spread out all over the map because there's so many locations and the map is so big. And they talk about that in this part of the interview right here. One of the elements the team struggled with was figuring out how many players should be able to play together at once. It's a decision that involved both engineering and game design. On one hand, you have to look at the servers and see how many players they can support and keep that same level of fidelity we're used to in games like Fallout 4. And on the other hand, the game designers want to know how often players should run into each other to try and keep that moment special. Um, so yeah, that's been a challenge. It's like, how do we how do we keep the feel of these games, like where it's a world where you can interact with everything? And um, that's, that's part of the appeal of a Skyrim, right? It's like you can you see a jar on a table, you can pick up and mess with the jar, you can knock it off and you can, you can do whatever you want. Um, get AI to do crazy things. Yeah, it's, it, that is a, it's a continual balancing act. That's, that's, that's part of the art, right? It's like, you know, do you cut content or do you do, you, um, do more technical work to try to make the content work? Um, and it's like, it's a, it's a call. We had some very grand plans for this game, which I, I think, you know, w once we talk about more later, it w will actually come to fruition. But the game we, we're very proud of right now that we're going to ship is about 24 people on the server, 24 to 32. The, one of the, the things that Todd pushed for the whole time, which we were all scared about a little, was you're going to open up the paper map and see this huge area, and you're going to see where these other people are, for good or ill, right? So it's, do you want to go help them? Do you see them, they're doing this huge event that you can join in and get the big reward? Do you want to try to shoot them? However, that our PvP system ends up working out. Um, you know, do you want to trade with them? Do they will become friends that you follow across all the servers? So the, all the servers are, are, you know, 24 person instance. You load in, you go in. It'll be full of people. Be able to play with them, quest with them, or ignore them. Have your teams and buddies. Like if you're my buddy, and you load in the game, I can just jump and immediately join you in your world, and it's seamless. Like you just, it based a load screen, you're in. So yeah, guys, I think that's really cool. I mean, 24 to 32 people on a map, four times the size of Fallout 4, that'll cut down on griefing because you really won't run into people that often, which is awesome. Also, Todd Howard has talked when they launch the game and they release it, they're going to be doing a lot of tweaks. When they see people, you know, when they see people griefing, essentially they're going to try to tweak it and stuff like that so they can't do it. And he talks about that in an interview at E3 in this clip here. So if you sort of picture doing those quests or you watch someone play Fallout 4, it's like that. But then, as opposed to running into a gang of raiders, yeah. those are real players. So there's and, always there's always PvP, like you can never, it's all... Well, we, first of all, I'd say we're still dialing that. Okay. We don't want it to be griefy, but we want to have some drama there. Okay. So there is a way that you can decide to do PvP. And we are currently balancing kind of the incentives for someone who wants to be uh, very aggressive to people yeah. and those who want to ignore it. Yeah. And that really comes down to, um, you know, the in-game incentives and then also the social incentives. But I would say we don't want it to be griefy in any way. Okay. And we'll dial it in so people can say, "Look, I don't, I don't want to deal with that." So you can pick. It's like I don't want, I don't want PVP. Well, you want a little bit of a, a little fear, I guess. It sounds like. We want a little bit of drama there yeah. without the, um, without them ruining your game. So guys, Todd Howard talked about how he doesn't want the experience to be griefy for people, and how they'll tweak the multiplayer, which I think is really cool because people are always going to find a way to grief, in my opinion. However, I think it's going to be very hard to grief in Fallout 76 with all these kind of mechanics implemented. And in addition to all the tweaks that they'll be making to it, I think it'll be very hard to grief. And it's something that is really awesome, in my opinion, because you look at a lot of these online survival games. Heck, look at Fallout 76. One of the most major complaints I see in Fallout 76 
uh, or about Fallout 76 in my comment section and comment section of other YouTubers is that there will be griefers in the game. And it seems like they've put a lot of mechanics inside the game to cut down on people griefing. It seems like they put so many mechanics in the game that it will be nearly impossible to grief. And it seems like Fallout 76 will not have any griefers in it just because it will be so hard to do or it will be so hard to grief people and they really won't get anything out of it. I mean, if we look at everything again in overview, first of all, your body can't be looted. So there's really no loss of worrying about losing your favorite weapon or your favorite gun or your clothing or your armor. They talk about how you could just challenge the person or you could spawn somewhere else and walk away completely, which is genius. I mean, we kind of see that system in Grand Theft Auto V and it works really well. If one person's killing you constantly, you could choose, you know, to spawn somewhere else and you could just drive off. And it's really hard for that person to come get you and come find you again. And I kind of see Fallout 76 being like that as well. And I think that's really cool. They also talk about the camp placement where people can't just place their bases anywhere they want. There's going to be some restrictions. They can't place it outside the vault so they won't just be killing people constantly over and over and just trolling, which is awesome as well. They talk about placing bounties on the heads of players who are really aggressive, which will in turn cause, you know, other people, other players to kill those then aggressive players. And it will kind of probably make those aggressive players cut down on, you know, going around and just killing people. I mean, they could still do it, sure, but there's really no more incentive for them to do it. They might get a couple of caps here and there because we've seen in the Fallout 76 gameplay trailer, you get eight caps for killing people or a small minuscule amount of caps for killing people, but nothing really major. So you really have nothing to gain out of killing people. In fact, I think you have more to lose out of killing people. Um, I think ammunition and stuff like that is going to be very scarce in the game, and I highly doubt people are going to want to waste your ammunition on killing people over and over when there's truly nothing to gain out of it. And the major one is that there's going to be very few people per server, 24 to 32, which is genius. I mean, if you have 24 to 32 people on a map the size of Fallout, four times the size of Fallout 4, it's going to be hard to run into people, it's going to be hard to find people, it's going to be hard to cross paths with anybody. Sure, it might happen every so often, but it's not going to happen all to the time to the point where it's going to bother you or affect your game in any way, shape, or form. And I think that's really cool. What do you guys think? Are you guys happy that Bethesda Game Studios is implementing all these mechanics so Fallout 76 will not have grief griefers in it? I do. You know, griefing is something I worry about. You know, I hate when I play an online game and somebody keeps on killing me over and over and just taking my things. You know, I really, really like the fact that they're going to take all these steps and all these precautions to stop people from griefing. And that's just really cool in my opinion. Now guys, uh, I know some people might say, but can people raid your base and stuff like that? Uh, they haven't really said anything, but Bethesda Game Studios really hasn't said if people could raid your base or destroy your things. However, if you look at Fallout 4's building system, which is very similar to Fallout 76's building system from what we've seen, um, if you place down a wall in Fallout 4, if you build a building, you could launch anything you want on it. You could set a thousand Nuka Mines off, and it's not going to affect your building or your base in any way, shape, or form. You know, when you place trunks or when you place items or large objects, they're kind of locked in place and can't be destroyed, and I think that's really cool. And I think we'll see that in Fallout 76 as well, so people can't just launch missiles at your base and destroy it. I think they'll be able to break your turrets and break your, you know, uh, water stuff. I think they'll be able to break your, you know, wind turbines. But I don't think they'll be able to completely destroy it to the point where you would have to rebuild it. Plus, you'll be able to have defenses at your base. So there's really kind of no reason to worry about someone destroying your things if you got really good defenses. So yeah, guys, it looks like in Fallout 76, there's going to be a lot of mechanics. It looks like Bethesda Game Studios has thought a lot about this and knew that griefing was a huge issue in online games, and it seems like they have put a lot of steps in there and a lot of mechanics to solve that, and I think that's really awesome. But like I said, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Are you happy that Bethesda Game Studios is implementing all these mechanics so they will, there will not be griefers? I think it's really awesome. I think since they're implementing all these mechanics, you know, Fallout 76 might feel like a Fallout, you know? 
just with a little added element of danger in there every now and then when you see somebody. But I don't think it's going to be the point to where it ruins your game completely or terribly. So yeah, guys, I'm really excited and I'm really amazed to see Bethesda Game Studios work so hard on an issue like griefing to pre prevent it from happening. Because if it happened a lot, Fallout 76 might not be all that great. But it seems like they're taking a lot of steps and precautions to prevent it, and I think that's awesome. What do you guys think? I Hopefully they have a passive mode in there as well to where if somebody kills me, I might get like 15 or 30 minutes where anybody can't kill me. I think that would be really smart and really cool. And probably a genius idea. They didn't really talk about it. They might have hinted at it a few times, but they didn't really talk about it. And I really have no, you know, kind of clips to show you of that. Because they really didn't confirm anything. But hopefully it will have some kind of passive mode in it. But like I said, what did you guys think? Are you guys excited to see these mechanics in place so people can't grieve? I am. Let me know your opinions, comments, concerns. And uh, let me know all of your opinions, your questions, your comments, concerns. Leave them all down in the, you know, uh, description. No, comment section below. Anyways, guys, I love each and every single one of you. I hope you guys are right back here tomorrow. But until then, remember to stay freaky. Bye, everyone.